My name is Kelly Shea and I'm the laboratory manager and also I'm a research technician in Niels Heisen's laboratory. It's so difficult because um, many people do not know how to distinguish um, the different tissue layers. So what you have to do is essentially peel back all of the tissue layers to expose the underlying embryo, um, which at this point is not very vascularized. So um, it's very transparent and it's hard to distinguish. take um, pretty blunt forceps um, and scissors. First thing you want to do is pinch the animal right around the midline. And go ahead and make um, a first cut. And then from that point, you can just pull the skin apart, exposing the abdomen of the animal. There's a thin layer of the peritoneum that you're going to pull up with the forceps and then you can cut apart with scissors. And just flap that back. And you want to cut along the mesometrium of the animal and pull apart both uterine horns, which are connected at the middle. You can cut right at the base. You're going to probably get a lot of fat along with it. You take the entire uterine horn of the animal, just place it right into the PBS. This is the uterine horn. Um, these are the implantation sites. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. What you want to do is just separate them. Mm -hmm. You can basically cut between the implantation sites right here. Mm You can just grasp the embryo on its side, basically pry it apart. At this point, you're exposing the deciduum, which is a more spongy tissue underneath. So the embryo should be um, right in the middle right mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. This is the apex mm -hmm. of the deciduum. So you want to orient it facing up with mm -hmm. the apex. Um, what you're going to end up doing is snipping off about one-fifth mm -hmm. of the way down um, from the apex. And the embryo should sit right in the middle right here. What I end up doing is orienting it sideways, taking one pair of forceps and kind of grasping it, holding it down with the other, cutting off the tip of it, and then separating it. So once that cap is removed, Stand the embryo on its edge. And as you can see, you can um, 
There's an opening mm -hmm. right at the um, right where you removed the cap. I just want to pry the forceps in there. Yep. So at this point, um, the embryo sits very loosely in, in the deciduum. Once you pry the deciduum open, mm -hmm. you can basically pop it out mm -hmm. relatively easy as long as you get up underneath the base of it. So it's very tiny. There are also some tissues still attached mm -hmm. to the embryo. Um, you have the ectoplacental cone, which mm -hmm. is right here mm -hmm. at the apex of the embryo. And also um, you have some other tissues still attached. So I just take um, a separate pipette. And suck him up. At this point, um, you want to fix the embryos, so I have just a dish of um, PFA. We wanted to look into candidate genes. Um, basically, we're using whole mount RNA and situ techniques. Um, to visualize the production of nucleic acids in situ within an embryo. Um, these specific genes we're very interested in um, encode putative germ cell precursor markers and also um, they're predicted to be expressed in the mouse embryo at a specific time point that helps the germ cells um, develop and mature from putative germ cell precursors into germ cells. One such factor that we are very interested in first, um, and, and the first factor that we actually did whole mount in situ on um, these day 6.5 embryos was the bone morphogenic protein for BMP4. Um, it's a member of the TGF beta superfamily. Um, it's very important um, and is absolutely required in germ cell maturation. And it's also required for the germ cells to translocate throughout the embryo and reside um, located near to the um, primitive streak of the embryo. BMP4 plays a critical role in both its signaling and um, the maturation that the germ cells need to go through in order to um, reside in the primitive streak. So you want to, number one, make sure um, you know what you're looking for. You know how small it is, um, what scale you're working with, and also um, to sit down and plan very carefully the technique um, especially with what kind of dissecting microscope you're going to be using. Um, one of the technical difficulties is this involves a lot of manipulation um, and very, very steady hand movements um, so that you don't damage the embryo. Um, so you want a dissecting microscope where you have a lot of um, room to manipulate and also um, make sure that you have everything set up that you need for the experiment so that you're not doing much more manipulation than what you need to be doing within the dissection. Um, so other than that, um, I think you need to take it very slow and um, peel back the individual tissue layers very slow so that you know what you're working with and um, make sure you know where the embryo sits.